Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashlips and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I've got something very special to share and that is the documentation to the Art Engine V2. So yes, today the documentation is available for the Art Engine, although it's a bit rough, but it will give you the context that you'll need as a developer to develop plugins for the Art Engine. So let's get right into it. What you can do is go to lab.hashtabs.io and when you get to this page, you can see it's under construction, uh, but you can just simply head over to docs. Currently, there are these two options and the one that we are interested in is the art engine. So we can click on discover more or you can go on these tabs. There is a lot of content in the documentation which you can read on your own time, but what I'm gonna discuss in this video is the structure and I'm going to cover some important aspects when it comes to creating plugins because the video after this one, I'm actually going to build out each one of these plugins so you can see an example. Also throughout the documentation, you will see these notes and this is just because the documentation can and will change because we are refining it. However, for the structure, you get this overview section which explains the art engine and also brief history of the OG art engine that came before this one. Then we get into a get started section after you have your node environment set up. This is how you install it for those developers. You know the drill. However, you get access to the open source repository if you wanna look at the source code, as well as the NPM package. Usage is very simple and there's a ton of videos prior to this one on how to simply use the art engine. But here it is again and it explains things like the properties, how they work, and uh, goes a bit more in detail on how to add your plugins individually. This is a big example for people who just want to copy this and run it and make some additions uh, to what they want to generate. Now, this is where I want to make my first point, and that is about plugins. As we can see, the art engine itself is here, but it's just a looping mechanism that works with individual plugins called inputs, generators, renderers, and exporters. It is crucial to understand that the art engine itself comes with its own core plugins, which you can find on this tab over here. And if we go to overview, here they are. As it currently stands, there's not an extensive list of plugins, although you do have the base image generation plugin. With time, I am planning to expand on the plugins to make more of these core plugins available. But the point of this documentation is to show you how you can create your own plugins as well. But let's quickly cover the core plugin section. So in the overview, we essentially get all the plugins listed out and they are highlighted in pink. So if you click on one of these, it will simply take you to one of these tabs and go to that plugin. So if we open up inputs, we can see we've got the image layers input. And each of these plugin pages are structured in a way to give you a bit of an overview, then allows you to add the plugin to the art engine, shows you what it needs, it talks about the parameters, the dependencies if there is any, and then we get into a section called the interfaces. Now this section is very important for developers. Maybe not so for the core plugins, but especially when we get into the custom plugins. Now, an important takeaway is to understand that each plugin, whether it's a type of input, generator, renderer, or exporter, has to implement its own base interface. That allows it to work with the art engine. We will discover the base interfaces uh, shortly, but just understand that each base interface is generic, apart from the exporters, which means that we could actually implement the base interface and for the custom logic of this particular plugin, it can implement its own defined interface. And that's essentially how it works. It might seem very technical if you are not a developer, but don't worry. I hope that I can explain this clearly as we go down looking at the custom plugin section. For now, just understand that the core plugins, I've listed out their interfaces here as well for if a developer ever wants to use whatever they export. Going down the list, we can see that the generators, we've got the image layers attributes, 
And keep in mind that certain plugins are designed to work with one another. I will show you when it comes to creating custom plugins how we can determine that. But that's just a general rule of thumb because you cannot use an image with, let's say, a video plugin next to it. Uh, but that will be more clear as we go along. So we get the generators, and this is an example of the generator that we have. We've got two renderers, which is for images and attributes. And then we've got a few exporters, which has to do with the metadata for NFTs, but it doesn't have to be. And I'll show that in the examples as we go as well. Now, let's focus on the custom plugin section. And just to be clear, although I said you cannot put an image plugin next to a video plugin, yes, generally that cannot happen because they might not work together. But if it's a custom plugin and it's configured to maybe translate images into videos, that is possible. Okay, so now getting to the overview section of the custom plugins here, you can see with the help of ChatGPT, because I certainly didn't write all this stuff out, but I'm trying to make sure that it is understandable enough. If you do find something that is a bit odd, let me know in the comments. Uh, I would really appreciate that, seeing that I am busy refining this. Anyway, here we can see the four different plugin types that is available for us as developers to create. And like I said before, you can go ahead and read this on your own time. Go and understand what each plugin is for so that you can maybe have a goal in mind and decide which plugins you'll need to create. There is a section on how the art engine actually works, the steps that are taken and when a plugin is run, what functions on each plugin is called in the respective sequence. This is absolutely crucial to understand when you do want to develop plugins. There's also a visual representation over here. And then we get into some plugin interactions. And this is just basically saying that understand uh, how the process works so that you can understand which plugins works with the ones that you are developing. And this is important because sometimes if there is available core plugins, which exports data that you can use, you might not need to create all four plugin types to fit your needs. Sometimes you might, but whatever the case might be, this section will help you understand which plugins you need to create. And also, why do you want to create plugins? Well, first of all, if you create your own custom plugins, you can create something phenomenal with this process, but also you get the chance to share it with the open source community, contributing to the ecosystem. And if it's a good enough plugin, we are going to include that in the core plugins. But let's go and focus on the inputs the generators, renderers, and exporters custom plugins. Now, the structure here is a bit different. For the inputs, the first thing we get, and for all of the plugins, is the base interface. Now, this is extremely technical if you are not used to TypeScript and interfaces in general. However, this is important to understand, to know that for a plugin, this is the interface that we need to implement. And even if you are a developer, sometimes these things might be confusing. In the next videos, I'm going to actually build out uh, each plugin type. And then you get to see how you can do it as well and follow along. So this is just what I wanted to mention. However, each one of these plugins have their respective base interfaces. Also, what is included is an example of each base plugin without really any good logic, <laughs> but it is a base implementation. And this is a starting point for you to maybe copy the code and then go and adapt it to your needs. So without further ado, I think I will start the next video, which will come out after this one, where we create our very first plugin, which is going to be the input plugin. And we're going to do it to show you how to work with uh, words to create maybe fake seed phrases. It's going to be awesome. Now, talking about YouTube, recently YouTube has kind of obliterated the 
exposure that these videos get. Now, I do not know if it's because of my monotone voice when I explain highly uh, crucial information, which I cannot make so entertaining. I don't know the case, but anyway, I would appreciate if you interact with my videos, uh, like them, comment, tell me what you love about it, tell me what you hate about it, whatever the case might be. In this case, what did you enjoy about the documentation? Tell me that. Are you going to make some plugins? We would love to hear that. Anyway, we are going to move on to the next video, but I thoroughly enjoyed making this for you. I hope it's going to help a lot of developers out. And hopefully with the next few videos, you're going to feel more comfortable of trying out your own plugins and seeing how it can work with the art engine. Cheers for now. See you in the next video.